Our scripture today comes from Romans 12, 2, verses 9 through 18 and 21. Do not change yourselves to be like the people of this world, but be changed within by a new way of thinking. Then you will be able to decide what God wants for you. You will know what is good and pleasing to him and what is perfect. You will, your love must be real. Hate what is evil, and hold on to what is good. Love each other like brothers and sisters. Give each other more honor than you want for yourselves. Do not be lazy, but work hard, serving the Lord with all your heart. Be joyful because you have hope. Be patient when trouble comes. And pray at all times. Share with God's people who need help. Bring strangers in need into your homes. Wish good for those who harm you. Wish them well and do not curse them. Be happy with those who are happy. And be sad with those who are sad. Live in peace with each other. Do not be proud, but make friends with those who seem unimportant. Do not think how smart you are. If someone does wrong to you, do not pay him back by doing wrong to him. Try to do what everyone thinks is right. Do your best to live in peace with everyone. Do not let evil defeat you, but defeat evil by doing good. Among the hundreds of people waiting to visit Mahatma Gandhi that day were a mother and her young son. When it was their turn, the woman asked Gandhi to speak with her son about eating sugar. Gandhi asked her to come back in two weeks, and he said he would talk to the boy then. She wondered why he didn't just speak to her son when he was already there, but she complied with his request. In two weeks, they returned, and after waiting for a couple of hours, she was able to approach Gandhi again. Hearing her repeated request, Gandhi immediately spoke to the boy, who agreed to begin eliminating sweets. After thanking Gandhi for his wise and compassionate words, the mother asked him why he wanted them to return instead of offering his advice the first time. Gandhi replied, Upon your visit two weeks ago, I too was eating sugar. He explained that he could not speak of or teach her son not to eat sugar if he himself had not taken that journey. Whatever changes you would like to affect in others have to begin with you. Be the change you wish to see in the world. Now this phrase that we've been saying all morning or singing all morning has been attributed to Mahatma Gandhi. I do not know if that story is true. And apparently, even the words themselves may not be a direct quote either. But what Gandhi has been quoted as saying is this. We but mirror the world. All the tendencies present in the outer world are to be found in the world of our body. If we could change ourselves, the tendency in the world would also change. As a man changes his own nature, so does the attitude of the world change towards him. This is a divine mystery supreme. A wonderful thing it is, and the source of our happiness. We need not wait to see what others do. The longer and more accurate quote is certainly encompassed in the phrase that we attribute to Gandhi. 
We rarely can change the things that we're frustrated about, particularly those global changes, but we do have control over ourselves. We can change. And we mirror the world. If we change our way of thinking, our response to our own emotions, our behavior, then the world around us will be altered by what we do. If we want to see something happen, we ourselves must do it in order to manifest it. Does that mean we can stop global warming, end war, eradicate poverty, hunger, injustice? Well, unless we do our part to manifest that change that we wish to see, we know it won't happen. We cannot expect someone else to solve our problems, even the world's biggest problems. Historian Howard Zinn said, revolutionary change does not come as one cataclysmic moment, but as an endless succession of surprises moving zigzag towards a more decent society. We don't have to engage in grand heroic actions to participate in the process of change. Small acts, when multiplied by millions of people, can transform the world. Over a decade ago, I decided to enact my values by giving up meat for Lent. Worried about the environmental impact of cattle, the cutting down of rainforests, the emissions the cows make, even economic justice. So I decided I would spend six weeks of Lent without eating meat, because if all I could do was wring my hands in fear about what was happening to our earth, then I wasn't any good to anybody. So I had to do something. I chose then to remove myself and no longer contribute to the meat industry for six weeks. Once Lent ended, I realized I was changed by the process. I would never touch meat again. I think that experience, I think about that experience a lot because something in me changed when I made that decision. It didn't come instantaneously. It took six weeks, but I did change. And it gives me great hope for myself and even the world because now I know that I am capable of changing. Change is possible. Now I know that my personal decision didn't change the whole world. I didn't solve the problem. But when one person changes, others are given permission or maybe even find inspiration to change as well. I know that I have personally witnessed and experienced how much easier it is to be a vegetarian today than it was even 13 years ago when I first became one. And it's not because I'm better at it. It's because more and more people made personal choices to make a change. And the industry began to change as well. Those personal changes changed the way society, restaurants, food science even, responded to vegetarians. Now, I don't tell you this story to convert you to vegetarianism, necessarily. And I don't tell you it so you think I'm some sort of a hero, but I share it because in my desire to change the world, I did change myself, and that change had an effect. If all of us made such a change, we could have an incredible impact upon our world. In fact, if every American went without meat for just one day a week, 1.4 billion less animals would be killed per year, per the Humane Society's estimates. Saving animals would in turn lower the emission of greenhouse gases by the equivalent of 10 billion charged smartphones, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. By skipping meat one day a week, Americans could save an estimated 100 billion gallons of water each year. How about 70 million gallons of gas, as well as 3 million acres of land? Again, this isn't a sermon about vegetarianism, but I will say that there are some potential health and even financial benefits that personally you can experience. But rather, this is really about how one change can affect change in so many different areas. I think it's important for us to remind ourselves that we do have power. When life is overwhelming, it's so easy for us to think that nothing can change or that it's up to somebody else to do it. 
that either I couldn't or I shouldn't be the one to fix things. How often do we fall into frustration, despair, and even blame? In so many ways, an acceptance of our powerlessness gets us off the hook. And we almost take comfort in being powerless, believing that we cannot do anything about it. It's certainly easier that way. But of course, that does not fix our frustration or the problem itself. And what does it say about us if we prefer being powerless to being powerful? After all, isn't that the point of our progressive faith? That we are not powerless to the powers of this world? That we all have agency? We all have choice? We all can make an impact? The question, of course, is whether it's going to be positive or negative, maybe neutral. When I think about the challenges that you and I are faced today, beyond those big ones like the environment, war, and poverty, I think so much that we continue to wrestle with comes from the pandemic. It has had such an effect upon all of us, globally, nationally, in our communities and families, and of course, as a church. I started ministry here at IUCC in the middle of the pandemic. And thank God we are not where we were then. But of course, we all recognize that while it isn't what it was two years ago, it's also not what it was three years ago, four years ago. So I think it's okay for us to name that we're still feeling grief. So much of life has returned to normal, and I thank God and science for vaccines. I'm thrilled that you and I can get the bivalent vaccine booster, and our kids can too, as of a couple days ago, five and up, getting there, and maybe we'll get the little ones before Christmas, and the holidays won't be so bad. Let's hope. But it's fair to say that we're sad, because church doesn't look the way it used to. It's not as full. We miss our friends. We are short-staffed. We're tired of masking. I get it. I feel a lot of that, too. I think some of us feel it more than others, and that's probably what makes it so much harder. So what can we do? What can I do? What can you do? Well, what would Gandhi do? One thing he wouldn't do is preach without practice. I can't ask you to invite your friends if I don't invite mine. I can't ask you to participate if I don't. And I can't ask you to give if I don't pledge. So I'll start. My husband and I decided we would increase our pledge this year. We realize that the church is continuing to face challenges. No one feels the impact of being understaffed more than I do. Although I'm sure all of us feel it at one level or another, we've certainly experienced it as our volunteers back there are bouncing back after Gemini stopped working in the test booth. We also firmly believe in the good that our church can do, the impact that we can have on the lives of those around us, those who are part of our church and those in our surrounding community. It matters that we are a part of a faith community that cares about the injustice of the world. If you're my Facebook friend, you might have seen an angry post I made two weeks ago when I found out about a pastor at a mega church in Huntington Beach who was preaching hatred towards trans people, really all of the LGBT community. When you hear of this stuff happening right here in our own community, we recognize just how important it is to be a part of a church that will stand up and call hate, hate. Be the change. To be the change that we wish to see in Christianity, in Orange County, and yeah, in the world. And so when we get overwhelmed by the state of this world, the future of our planet, I find hope that our green faith doesn't just twiddle its thumbs in despair. It calls us to make a difference, and not to just lobby for change, but making that change, starting right here in Irvine. This church isn't just something that I am willing to invest my life in, but we are willing to invest our money in as well. We can be the change. And trust me, I know that change is scary. 
I imagine that's a big part of all of this. We want to change it back to the way it used to be, but we can't do that. So what we can do is be the change we wish to see. How so? By showing up. By giving of ourselves in whatever form that takes. But honestly, as we begin this stewardship season, we are asking you to consider giving a pledge. And if you can, help us by taking into account the higher employment costs that we now face, the higher costs in our utilities, they've skyrocketed. In fact, the higher costs of everything, really. You all know this. We would appreciate your consideration in increasing that pledge. Let me be clear, this is not all about money. It's rarely really about money. But someone here recently told me that this church doesn't run on prayers alone. It runs on people. People who are willing to give of themselves. People who see the ills of this world and cannot sit by idly doing nothing. People who recognize that even though the world doesn't look like it did, and our church doesn't either, we're not hopeless. We won't wallow in our despair or be consumed by our own frustrations. We are not condemned to death. And let me tell you this, second service particularly. You were not condemned to death. IUCC is not dying. We can be the change because we are the church. So despair not. Don't fall into the trappings of powerlessness. Remember, the divine mystery supreme is with us. Gandhi is right. Be the change you wish to see in the world in our church, in your own life. We are not so small after all. Amen.